They are now using the same thing today in the same as Muslims. The only reason why they're following Islam is because you're weak, is because you're oppressed, because you've got no food in your countries, because you've got dictatorship rulers and all these other things. And that if we get rid of these things and you have wealth and you have food and you won't have these dictatorship rulers, you're not going to want to call for Islam. These are the same claims they're making today. So what are the other things they're trying to do? You know, a few weeks ago we heard about this new possible government policy where they want to spy on five-year-olds. I don't know if you heard about this. You see this in the news? That they're worried about, you know, how young these people are being attracted to Islam. How young these people are being attracted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message. So what they're saying, we need to spy on them. We need to look at them. We need to watch them. And you know, the age of 13, 14 is too old. We need to watch them. We need to watch them at a much younger age now. So let's get teachers in nursery schools and primary schools to spy on these five-year-olds. That they talk about Salah and they talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, potential terrorists. Let's give his name to the MI5 and the secret services and we'll say we've got to watch this guy as he grows up because he's a potential terrorist. So again, similar situation to how they would watch the children and watch, if you remember the Sahaba, who would be attracted to the, the Prophet when he would came. You know, they would watch and they would spy who would go and visit him and to listen to his message. We saw the persecution of these disciples at the time of, the, of Isa Salatu Wasalam. So after these lies and the propaganda came the persecution. So we found how they were tortured and how they were crucified. Much like at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, how the Sahaba were also persecuted and how they were crucified. And today we find a similar situation again. Guantanamo Bay. You know, how is it you're able to arrest someone without trial, without evidence, torture them, this thing called waterboarding, deprive them of sleep, deprive them of many things, yeah? Torture them, you know, we saw the pictures of Abu Ghraib, remember how they would electrocute people, connect their parts of their body to various different appliances and apparatuses in order to electrocute them and to torture them. Is this not the same thing that happened at the time of Isa wasalam, and the time of the Prophet wasalam, how would they would torture the Muslims because of their message? So again you find today in our situation today again the similarities of the reality of how the early Muslims and the disciples of Isa wasalam, were tortured, were tortured and persecuted because of their belief. And in today, how Muslims are being tortured. So we find many examples of people in Guantanamo Bay. There's been absolutely no evidence at all. Not a single shred of evidence about them. They're not even allowed to go to court, where they can argue their case in the court of law. There is no judge, there is no trial, there is no jury. You're basically condemned. You're condemned. You've got no judge, you've got no trial, you've got absolutely nothing, you've just been accused, you're going to be locked up in Guantanamo Bay and they're going to throw away the keys. This other thing, this 90 day policy they wanted to bring in, where Tony Blair, if you remember, had this 90 day rule where he wanted to introduce a law where he could say they could arrest you for 90 days without a reason, without a lawyer or solicitor, without any evidence and they can keep you for 90 days. It's funny how this situation is very similar to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, the persecution and the crucifixion of the people who follow Allah's message. And then finally, Judas. Yeah. We probably often hear this word. You know, I, I remember the first time I heard this word is uh, I went to a football match and this uh, one player used to play for this one team. He then left and he went to this other team and he started to play for this other team. So everyone in the crowd kept calling him Judas. And they're like, what the hell is Judas? But if you remember the story of Judas was who? It was someone who betrayed Jesus because he was one of his disciples. He was with Jesus. And then what happened? He left Jesus, he left Isa Salatu Wasalam and he went to the Romans and he grasped Isa Salatu Wasalam up to the Romans. And then he became known as Judas and the name has stuck even to the day where he became a traitor to the message. And in fact you look at today we also have similar Judases, we also have similar traitors. Just to give you a few examples of this, you know, there was a, an article in uh, the Independent uh, newspaper a few weeks ago, and they interviewed 12 so-called prominent Muslims. And the whole interview about these uh, these people was to discuss how non-Muslims don't go to Jahannam. <coughs> yeah. So these 12 prominent so-called knowledgeable people came on the newspaper, non-Muslims. No, it's okay, you guys are okay, don't worry, stay in your kufr, continue with your Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, continue with the Santos Grotto and the rest of it, keep on drinking and have your Christmas food, not a problem, keep putting your presents underneath the tree, 
You all go to Jannah just like us as Muslims. Yeah? You get government scholars today, government scholars today in the Muslim world, who when the West were attacking Muslim women from wearing hijab, and they're, they're saying that you need to remove your hijab, you shouldn't wear your hijab. Rather than having Muslim scholars who stand up and say, how dare you attack our Muslim women for wearing hijab? What did these scholars do? What did these scholars do? They turn around and they say to the Muslim women, why are you wearing your hijab for? It's not a problem, you live in the West, take it off. Astaghfirullah Azim. These are the type of traitors and the type of judices we have today. What else do we have? When we have the sincere sons in Palestine fighting against the Israeli soldiers when they come to bomb them and to kill them. What do these Muslim scholars say? Rather than standing up and encouraging the people and reminding the people of their, their responsibility and their duty to defend their homeland and to protect them lives from foreign attackers, what do they say? They don't turn around and accuse the Israeli terrorists and the Israeli soldiers for bombing Muslim soldiers. They turn around and they condemn who? The little boys with their stones. They turn around and they accuse the little boys of their st uh, with their stones. And they remain silent about the Israeli government bombing and killing Muslims. And they remain silent about their own governments who do nothing to help the Muslims. But rather they turn around and they accuse the Muslims. So in similar situations today we have similar people today who also like Judas. Who they betrayed the honour of the Muslims. And rather the side, they, they're with the side of the Kuffar and they help, the, the, they help the Kuffar in order to help them achieve their objectives. So you find these people going around and they're saying this mosque, they're terrorists, they give talks in this mosque every Friday. So I remember in, um, it was in January we organised a local, a local discussion. This was at a time when Israel was bombing Gaza, if you remember. And we organised a discussion to raise awareness amongst the Muslims that there's this discussion taking place, this is an important issue for Muslims. Now Muslims are being killed. And what happened, one of these people from one of these organisations called up the centre which we booked and they said, you know, you let these people come in, these guys are terrorists, they're extremists, you should cancel the meeting. The next day I'll get a phone call saying that, sorry, your, your event's been cancelled. Your event's been cancelled, you're going to have to look elsewhere to do your event. Mm. So in short, there's many lessons that we can learn, and I've only touched on a, on a few of them because of time. But there's many lessons that we can learn from the time of Isa Salatu Wasalam. And this is the thing that we should, mes we should remember at this time. That Isa Salatu Wasalam was a messenger of Allah. He came to bring Tawheed. And today we live in a similar situation in a similar time. Where we face the same corruption and the same persecution that they faced at the time. And that we should look to his sunnah and we should look to his message. As a source of inspiration. And as a source of guidance for us. So that we can learn how to follow in a similar footsteps so that we can bring the message of Islam and the light of Islam to these people. I call you, call you, have that, but I'll stop from you.